Rock Bottom Podcast with Ray yeah, DeVito. Yeah, yeah. All right. He'll probably count yeah, I'll watch him, give him a countdown. He'll give you a 3 2. Give me a countdown, Dylan. Show me how to do this, Dylan. Two producers in the booth. Like, this is how we do it. There you go. Yeah. What's up? What's going on? Welcome. Rock Bottom Podcast with Ray DeVito. I got uh, Bobby Tempura. What's up, fella? What's going on, Ray? Thanks and, for having me, man. And Matt Marin. What's going on? What's up? How you doing? All right. Um, yeah, we're in Gas Digital Studios yeah. doing this. And uh, our, my man Dylan's back there producing this. Dylan's been on this podcast before. I got two yeah. uh, two uh, engineer producers with me. Yeah. You, That's Compound, awesome. and uh, Dylan. So Does yeah. Dylan look at you as his worst case scenario? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Probably. I do want to do this so I don't got to do plugs later. But yeah. my sponsors, SilkCityHotSauce.com. Check them out. Put in G-Hole, save 15%. I'm getting a hot sauce. I showed uh, I showed Blind Mike the, uh, the artwork for it. But yeah, it's... People in the podcast have seen it before. And then also, so put in GLC, 15%, and then um, victorypost.com, goat milk, soaps, and deodorants. Put in Raymond. Get 15% off and free shipping on your first uh, on your first order. All right, gentlemen, what's what, what's going have on? Have you had, ever had any of the Silk City hot sauces? I don't think so, no. They're, they're pretty yeah. cool. Berg has, like, Badass Jew. Bob Levy's yeah. got, like, uh, Buff, or what is it? What's Levy's? Um, he used blue to cheese. eat blue, blue cheese. cheese. I was, was going to jokingly yeah. say that. Of course it would yeah. be. And well, I heard I heard a great thing, man. Well, Thank he you. used to uh, eat women's asses out on yeah, stage that's with, with, with blue, blue cheese. cheese. That's yeah. where it came from. And yeah. I heard a great thing about that. If you use promo code POS, you actually save 15% as well. So you could try either nice. of those codes there, right? POS? Yeah, yeah, POS yeah. show. That's me and Pat Oates. I was just making a joke. Throwing our, <laughs> throwing our promo code out there, yeah. too. Oh, uh, what, what's if your... If you use promo code CFC, you get nothing, but you should still watch Comedy Fight Club. It's a great show. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. I was going to show you the artwork, but we don't, was... we don't need it. Let's get right into it. We what... got shit to do, man. Yeah. We got... F- f- first of all, man, Matt, you've been on this podcast a bunch. Yeah. What happened to you? People kind of know the story. The broken arm. You broke your arm. Well, well for people watching video, I'll show. Uh, yeah. the, I'll show off the scar a little bit. Yeah. We got all the way up this arm. Look at that. That is oh, called health man. insurance, everybody. With yeah. health insurance, how much that cost you? Um, no, uh, health insurance covered it. It just took forever to actually get it taken care of because uh, I have. Uh, I'm on like uh, Medicaid. Like real, or Medicare, whichever one's not the one for old people, the okay. one that, the ones for poor people. Poor comedians, yeah, yeah. The one we're all on. <laughs> um, I was actually so I was working. Um, I used to work security, and uh, during the pandemic, my license expired. And every two years, you just send it up to the state. They renew it. You just send paperwork. But they're like, oh, we're backed up, so we aren't uh, filling things out in time or whatever. So I just didn't have a license, and companies stopped hiring. Like I couldn't work anywhere. No. So I used so, to coach. So wait a minute. Yeah, so I just had no job, and my insurance was through my job. So then I just went on wait, Medicaid. Wait, wait, wait. I, I don't get it. You weren't able to work because you didn't have a license? Yeah. You need a security like license. Oh, New security York license. New York State license. Not like a driver's license. I thought no, you it's say New like York your... State security license. It's through the state, but the state was like Couldn't you just go get up. one? No, you have to uh, send stuff up to Albany. Send like paperwork. It's you like have a to like background check and stuff, right? You have to, to take sure. an eight, two eight-hour classes every year. Um, usually, I would just go. So there's a security company who has known me since I got my license. They would just fill out a piece of paper saying you took it and mail it up themselves. But they were closed during the pandemic, so I had to do a Zoom class, and they made me actually do a class. That's one of the biggest wastes of times I've ever done. It's just a 60-year-old black man lecturing us on different situations and what to do when you work in security. And one of the situations randomly, he's like, what if you have a man who wants to go into the woman's bathroom and says he identifies as a woman? I'm like, this is, what I, this is my security <laughs> training? A 60-year-old transphobic black man? <laughs> I, I thought he was going to show you, like, holds on what to do. Did he show you, like, how no. to restrain people? No, there, I mean, for just your basic security license, you're not training or anything like that if you do or doing like an armed license or something more advanced maybe there would be something this is just it's more customer service a lot of the time now tell the white trash way how you broke your arm arm wrestling yes so um i broke my arm arm wrestling at a comedy show on halloween weekend so i was in costume dressed as cobra kai (laughs) it's the dumbest story you could ever it's like if you wanted to make up the dumbest way to break a bone it uh this would be it it was in front of an audience too so there's a video of it well you know why they got rid of like arm wrestling used to be like on espn one of the most popular sports and they got rid of it because everybody was like uh tearing their elbows every 
Well, like, yeah, I like always, every five minutes. A lot of them were breaking their arms, and I figured, okay, but that's like, those guys are giants. Like, I'm not, there's no way me and another comedian are going to generate enough force to break someone's arm. No, I heard he was juicing. Is it true? Um, I don't know about that. He is African American, so. Do we know him? Jay Turner, Jerlon Turner. I don't, I don't yeah. know if I know him. I don't know. Every white liberal I know thinks I probably deserved it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just reparations. Dude, is yeah. he uh, at Brooklyn Comedy Club now? Is he the same Jalen? Turns out that's how you get passed. You break Matt's yeah. arm, you're yeah. in a Brooklyn Comedy <laughs> yeah. Club. I, actually, I don't know if he does Brooklyn Comedy uh, Club. Um, well, I'm glad you're yeah. all right, man. Well, so, of- so six months earlier on the same show, it's the heckle mic that Sarah Harvard runs, where it's just a bunch of people who know each other through doing open mics heckle each other, and they have a special guest. Um, and when you host Comedy Fight Club, you get to be a special guest on the heckle mic. Congratulations. It's the kind of, adva- it's kind of yeah, advantage. Yeah. That's the kind of clout I hold in the comedy community. <laughs> and uh, so six months ago, I did it, and he challenged me to arm wrestle then, and I beat him easily. And I guess he had been training for this day. Oh, my <laughs> God, know. dude. I don't know. origin story. Because then six months later, he challenged me again. I think he won. If you um, break the other dude's arm, it's like well, it's like Mortal Kombat. So like, I was going it. down, and I start fighting back oh, up, geez. thinking I'm coming back, and then we just Oof. hear a loud snap. Oh, oh, no. I looked up because I thought someone like do something against the wall, and I looked down, and my arm's just like a noodle, and I'm like, well, I broke my arm. And a lot of people in the room told me they didn't think it was real because I was calm about it. I was just like... Very matter of fact, I used to be a wrestler. I have the like yeah, push yeah. all emotion away, act rationally in the moment. Uh, yeah, we I'm just get like to the broke my arm. What do we do? I'll hold it. I will get ice. People are like, can I get you anything? Shot of whiskey well, I, I until the th- Uber comes. <laughs> yeah. I do not think ice is going to fix a broken arm. No, but I just needed I it to not be in pain in the moment. By the way, man, like I got punched in the in the back of the head like a uh, month and a half. Last time I was in New York City, I was in Pittsburgh. Yeah, and some drunk dude thought I was someone else supposedly, and he punched me in the back of the ear. It gave me a concussion. Turns out, but my ear just kept swelling up mm. for like uh, for like two three weeks. It just now started to go down. Yeah, but. Um, yeah, that shit is real. Yeah, these injuries, these injuries yeah, and do ge- not mess around. And in general, I mean, yeah, when I was wrestling, I had injuries and just like wouldn't tell doctors so I could wrestle the next day. Or of I was course, always yeah. the until you know a few years ago I had brain surgery, and then after that, when you find out I shouldn't have been alive and I should be dead, and they don't know how I did, and I'm a little bit more careful. Yeah, what since was then. your brain? Is that from concussions? No, I, I got looked at for concussions. I thought right. that's what it was, and it turned out it was just the thing I was born with. It's a congenital. <laughs> it turns <laughs> out you're just born. In- uh, yeah. With a soft brain G- or something? Gay, or? gay brains. No. <laughs> the congenitals what confuse that black guy on the video. Exactly. Right like, yeah. What do you go in the back? Yeah. Jesus. So what? I yours? think he also may have wanted to get revenge because we were all in costume, and the whole heckle show is everyone kind of like fucking with each other. And he was wearing like a uh, uh, Catholic nun outfit, and he came on stage, and I said, and he's black, so I said, "Are you dressed like a father because you didn't have one?" <laughs> <laughs> and then he breaks my arm, and I'm like, "Maybe, I, maybe I should lay off the uh, racist uh, jokes uh, <laughs> or a little bit." Jesus, yeah. It's or a I should double hard down and that lesson. Yeah, I should double down and now start going on like Tucker, Ben Shapiro, and. I'm I'm in with Kanye. It was a choice. Right. <laughs> Speaking of racial shit, because I want to get—I don't know if you guys saw this. Yeah. So this, by the way, this is how I do my notes. Just uh, right. My CVS bag that mm. my prescriptions right. So there's a Cincinnati, Ohio. So um, a middle school teacher, a middle school teacher in Cincinnati, Ohio. She's 25, and um, a white lady. And I guess she had some racist. Tweets. She yeah. was uh, tweeting rap lyrics that had the N word in it from uh, 14 years ago. So, mm. or she was 14 years old when she tweeted them. Yeah. And so now, it's only 11 years ago. That changes yeah, my yeah. view on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That three years. Yeah. Like there, but she was. Um, what do you call it? So she was 14. I was gonna yeah. say like if. I thought you put the tweets. No, on the no, ceiling. they, they like, can, they can done? do that on the if they wanted to go. The, but I don't know. In right. a post like Nick but, Fuentes, Milo, Kanye, world to be considered racist tweets, it's got to be a little more than well, just rap lyrics. It's now insane to me. watching these kids. They staged a walk, a walkout over it. The mm. school's like this isn't a big deal. She was fourteen. Yeah, who gives a shit? Yeah, and the parents are like upset. Like these black parents <sighs> are upset, saying they want this uh, teacher fired. I wish she would have come out like N.W.A. when they told him they couldn't do the rap song. And yeah. she's like, yeah, you all, all are punk asses. Yeah. I knew it. No balls. Yeah. But isn't that insane? Like, what do you guys think is a statue of limitation? Isn't that, is that, we just gotten way too sensitive. Like, I think there's no way that that teacher should be fired or even lectured for. Of course not. For, I mean. Like, tweeting and- something. 
anytime these things come up, you always you always just find out that um, our standards, like it's all well intentioned. We want to like stop bad things and bad people from doing things and happening, but. Everyone has done. If our standard is low enough that you tweeted lyrics 15 years ago, then uh, or 11 years ago, uh, everyone is going to be in trouble. Also, how do you find that stuff? I can't find a tweet I did. She failed one student who got pissed. Yeah, yeah. It was like, I'm uh, getting the wayback machine. But but how do you? Is there really a wayback machine? Because I you can yeah. just type keyword search. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Walnut Heights uh, walkout after teachers racist, homophobic Twitter. Oh, post. homophobic. Okay, what are these? Yeah. but this is one of the. the they, you can be honestly, board. if you're quoting rap <laughs> yeah. lyrics, it may be homophobic. There, it may just be rap lyrics. Still. Yeah, but look at all the kids and then all the teachers. They're like, are, are you serious? Like, are we that over the top sensitive? Like, and no one can be forgiven for anything. Yeah. Like, everything you do is now. Like, like, well, there's been a her few, life should be ruined. Well, look at all those parents and they're 10 years ago. Twitter, there's going to be something there for do you remember? The, I hate um, every one of those parents, yeah. every one of those parents should be like, Yeah, there they're, was a the um, problem. One of the big ones, uh, during like college game day a few years ago, someone was holding up a sign like, um, donate to uh, my fund for getting me more drunk and had his own yeah. Venmo there. And everyone like donated money to his Venmo. And so a local newspaper wrote an article about it and then found that he had tweeted offensive things 10 years ago. And of people, course he did. But of, course, yeah. Yeah, of course he did. But people got so mad at the reporter for saying that they went back and found that that reporter had also tweeted more things and shared it's, that stuff. That's the, it's just going to, end up being with everyone has done everyone said or tweeted something 10 years ago that's not good by today's standards it, it's so dumb yeah it, it goes back to what you said about breaking your arm though like you can't punch somebody in the face anymore like it yeah. used to be if you said there that's how you learn the line yeah you, you got punched in the face and you yeah. got yourself off the ground and we're like all right i guess i went too far that's yeah. my bad now it's like how do i get these people oh you said yeah. something naughty let's get rid of you yeah. i don't think he forth. actually was mad at me for making the father no, joke no, 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 <laughs> I yeah i think he like, just broke my arm and happened to be like well you know what maybe you shouldn't have said that <laughs> yeah i think it was chris uh de stefano who was like yeah i learned not to say the n-word by getting punched in the face and waking up and being yeah. like oh i guess i don't say that anymore yeah yeah, yeah. Like, like that's how you learn you, it you know same with bullies and stuff everybody's yeah. a bully till they get punched in the face What's what's the worst you did as a kid, Bobby? Go go uh, and you're come on. You're from Central Pennsylvania. You have a chew in your mouth. We can bleep out her name. <laughs> oh man, jeez, uh, Molly. Anyway, uh, no, I mean like the worst I did to a teacher. Like I convinced no, no, everybody that the teacher was the Antichrist. I started by being like, look at her name. It's all all of her names. Jewish it Berg. Was, no, I wish <laughs> that would have been easier. It was Darby Alexis Fischel, and the way she spelled it, it all had six letters. Mm. And then I would do things like we would put holy water in a drink and she'd get sick. And like I had these <laughs> students convinced she was. And the how old were you? You were I was a freshman in high school. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She mm. like gave us. And all why a did test. you hate her so much? She gave us a test and didn't teach us anything on it. And then was like, you guys are all stupid. And I was like, you get to do it one of two ways. Either we're stupid and you taught us the stuff or you didn't. And, just, you know, I don't let things go well, Ray. Yeah. That was that one teacher. Dude. I, the only incident I had with the teacher is uh, I talked about this before. I wrote a – my dad used to – I thought every kid got hit. I thought every kid got hit. <laughs> yeah. I, I, mean, I didn't yeah. know that that was like a thing. Just the, just the retarded ones. Yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't know that it was such a thing that yeah. p kids didn't get hit. So I was in 10th grade, and I wrote a paper about my dad beating the shit out of me. And uh, it was all over the paper. And then, like, she handed back the papers. Miss Pertu was her name. All over your paper. No, she handed the class back all of our papers. Yeah. You, when you said it was all over the paper, you mean yours no, 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 in no, the no. local she, newspaper? No, no, no. <laughs> no, it did not make the okay. news. She was handing back the, papers. the class yeah. all their papers. Now, I was the only one that didn't get a paper. From, I didn't get my paper back. Yeah. I'm like, what's going on here? And then she goes, she, and this is while the whole class is still there. And she says to me, she goes, uh, Ray, I saw your paper. I want to talk to you about it afterwards. And then I go, and then this, like, I, I'm not even thinking. It's because I mentioned my dad beat the crap out of me. Yeah. And I'm like, why? What, what's up? And she goes, you wrote some things that are concerning uh, about your dad. She says this in front of the whole class. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> about your dad hitting you. Yeah. And I gave it to you. You're like, bitch, what are you doing? He's going to beat up both of us yeah, now. Yeah, <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> she, she says it in front of the whole class, and she goes, uh, I gave it to social services, oh, and they're going to contact you and your parents oh my God. in front of the whole class. I'm not even thinking I'm in front of my peers. How old were you at this point? I'm going to say ninth or 10th grade. Okay. And I just start bawling. I just start crying my eyes. I'm not even thinking I'm in front of 
yeah like peers anymore i'm like what are you doing i'm gonna get in so much trouble yeah, yeah. <laughs> but boy I'm, if i thought I, you thought i got hit before yeah wait till yeah. wait till this yeah and like what a piece of shit to do that in front of the whole class do it period that's between you and your dad that's a family thing <laughs> yeah. right? like don't, don't well get not involved. even that but don't do that in front of the entire class oh, definitely yeah. i just started crying like i didn't even think about it and then i had kids making fun of me for obviously for the next like month. Yeah, about... I want I want to make fun of you now about it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's which is fine now. Yeah, but I just remember thinking, about it, like, what the fuck was she thinking? Now that teacher should be on the fucking news where people yeah. are protesting. Yeah, being like uh, not someone that said like an offensive tweet. And also, I think it was Bill Burr that did a joke about that. Like, if they d- dig through your tweets. And they find like one disgraceful yeah. tweet. What about the thirteen years you did? You, you didn't. Did? You weren't an asshole. Yeah, one fuck weren't. up. Yeah, yeah. How how about we reward them for those thirteen years? Yeah. No. Why doesn't anyone ever go back and find tweets of you like talking about some charity event you did, and you get like something? Why doesn't anyone ever give people nice things because yeah, of yeah. old good things they did? And they can just watch this podcast. That's my charity. Event. <laughs> yeah. I help Ray out. Yeah. <laughs> But do you get what I'm saying? Like, how insane is that? Well, it's crazy. I mean, for you even, like, that's pretty progressive that a teacher was like, hey, you shouldn't be getting kicked. I remember my dad calling a timeout in fifth grade basketball and being like, you four better play harder because I can only yell at you. But you, I can kick the shit out of you when we get home. And I was like, guys, we got to start going. Yeah. This is going to get ugly. Yeah. That. um... See, I played in a Jewish basketball league, so there was none of that. (laughs) (laughs) No, we could have beaten up the coach. Oh, yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. (laughs) Then the other thing, I do this as a a joke in my act, and this doesn't really hurt my feelings, but like in art class, some kid, we had to like draw other kids in the class, and the kid that drew me just drew me with all my acne. Yeah. Like all the white heads I, uh... That's a terrible, I mean, if you have to draw an Asian kid, it's gonna kind of... Yeah, you're in trouble already. It's (laughs) it's gonna look like a hate crime. Exactly. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You just don't like, oh no. Yeah. Uh, How do I get the lips right on this kid? Yeah. Like, that's, uh, yeah, that's gonna be like, oh, Mm. you don't want to make the eyes too uh, Asian. Yeah. Like, yeah. The teacher gets you in trouble, because she's like, you're supposed to draw Jamal, not Raquel, and you're like, oh no, they don't. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, like, uh, the kid that drew me, like, drew all my acne, but yeah. he was, like, really good. And, like, so his um, drawing ended up, like, hanging in the hallway of the school. So I, like, walked by my own shame for, like, three months, like, uh, all the drawings of my f- fucking acne. Yeah. And, like, how humiliating was that? But it's a different day and age, though, because, like... Now everyone's like overly sensitive. I don't know. I'm older than you guys. But yeah. like Tony Mazer was telling me, he's a few years younger than me, that when he was in school, um, when people would sign the yearbooks, that I used to not buy a yearbook on purpose because I was afraid no one would sign mine. Wow. Like hmm. I, I was embarrassed that no one would sign my yearbook. <laughs> As other kids were like, did you guys have anything like that? We well, have, I remember having the yearbooks, but everyone just signed each other. It's almost like everyone yeah. just asked everyone else to, and it was like, I don't know. It's like you asked because everyone's just going to. It wasn't a, we're, I'm only going to sign these people's yearbooks. Yeah. It's more like, I was in my uh, own head like that. Fucking but... this kid with acne whose dad beats him is going to ask me to <laughs> sign his yearbook. I ain't, I'm not yeah, doing that. They sign my yearbook, sorry, your dad beats the shit out of you. <laughs> I was going to say, Matt's subtly dropped he was a wrestler. I've dropped a couple of sports. We had friends, right? We didn't have to worry about nobody signing yeah, our yearbooks. <laughs> Look at you guys. Now we have you. Yeah. yeah. I'd sign your yearbook. I was, right? always, I was always like in the middle because I was never like a cool popular kid, but I also, I just, I liked sports a lot, but I was bad at them. So I always had like- Well, uh, you're Jewish, so- so that yeah, explains, exactly. Yeah, I don't expect you to be good. Yeah, at I was. I was like the. I like kid, how that's an acceptable stereotype yeah. to say. Yeah, no, I'd be on the little league baseball team, telling everyone like baseball stats, while they all like actually were good at baseball. Guys, I'm telling you, it's sabermetrics. Yeah, <laughs> listen to me. We're gonna win. I was the sports nerd who like I had a baseball almanac that I used to read before I went to bed every night and memorize <laughs> like World yeah. Series records and everything. That's oh, I was the cool. same way. Like, yeah, I stats. But, but I yeah, I used to. I was friends with all the jocks because I played sports i got along with them and i was friends with all the nerds because we had the same athletic ability yeah, yeah. exactly you were yeah. just good better than the nerds in yes. sports but way worse than all the jobs in my gym in class boat. we did like a football uh one season and i picked all the like nerdy kids who never got picked i'm like i'm gonna throw the ball to the kids who never get the ball like some fucking rudy or water boy type movie and then i played with them and they all kept dropping it and then quit halfway through the <laughs> season i'm like you fucking deserve it now and i don't feel bad this for you guys getting no picked on you. now oh no i would do that in dodgeball like you yeah. definitely would throw the ball at the kid that you knew couldn't catch it. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah. We uh we had the gym teacher. Did you guys 
I'm sure you didn't, Ray, but did you have kids who wouldn't do gym? They would just like sit, sit in on the, the corner. Side. Yeah. yeah. We had the gym teacher come over and be like, I'll give you all bonus points if you can figure out a way to throw a pass into that end zone and just lay out three of them. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like yeah. he oh, would really? set us up to be like, yeah, go lay out the to kids not doing dick? stuff. Yeah, 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 absolutely. That's very wow. funny. What was your sport you played? I mean, I played football, basketball, and lacrosse. I wasn't good at any. You played basketball? Of them. Yeah. I was like, yeah. what, you're like five foot four. I, I'm five foot six. Five foot six. All right. Is there a court around here? I'll show you what's up. Yeah, there. all I right. I got a jumper. Yeah, I was. I played. Um, I played baseball until I got better. I was better at wrestling, and that summertime is wrestling tournaments that I would oh, do. Yeah. So I just couldn't do baseball. I didn't make my high school team, and it was like, all right, really work hard to try and make it my sophomore year. Or this wrestling thing that I'm actually doing well at. Continue with that. Yeah. But I did. Uh, I played in the Jewish basketball league because I used to just go up on the street. Uh, in Queens playing basketball with my friends. Just a Jewish kid on the street. You know how it is. There's no yeah. fucking Jewish in the kids ghetto, on the... In the ghetto. No. They would uh, not let you the be. Jewish, the Jewish ghettos. They yeah. come yeah. and now. They come and get you. Like, yeah. I, I get that all the time where Jewish guys, old Jewish guys come up to me and they want to pray with you. What's that called? Uh, the tefillin. That's what I get. Yeah. The tefillin? That's what yeah. they always they want to They want you to do me. tefillin. It's a mitzvah. They ask yeah. me if I'm Jewish. I just say no and keep walking. And sometimes they'll look I at me a like, second time. I'm like, I know I don't look Jewish, but it's like they know somehow. No. <laughs> They're like, I, I could sense it. I um, like the attention. So I'm yeah. like, yeah, let's, I'll, I'll hold their hand. Yeah. I'll but hold I, their hairy knuckles. The thing is, and... I, like, I'm tall. I was always tall as a kid. So I played like, I was like a center power forward type. So by the time I get to high school, I'm 6'1", six, 6'2". Six, now, like, even then, I was still one of the taller kids, but not like basketball tall. So I, I, I never knew how to dribble. I never worked on dribbling. I was working on getting rebounds, but everyone else is six foot five, six foot six at that point. So to be a power forward, I had to play in the Jewish basketball league. I remember in my sophomore year being like, hey, mom and dad, I think I'm going to focus exactly on basketball. And yeah. then pulling me aside and being like, that's not the basket to put all your eggs in. You're yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, let's figure out something else here. Yeah. And now you got to, I do like your Harlem Globetrotters hat. Oh, though. thanks, man. That's cool. All right. I wanted to also talk about, did you, all right. This is where fucking Yahoo sucks. You guys have Yahoo as your homepage? No. I've no. shit on Yahoo a bunch just for the it's fact that- It's 2023. But they- uh, It's Google's world, baby. You're yeah, just living yeah. In. No, it's, like actually, they, it's actually 2022. Yahoo's got a month left. Okay, yeah, yeah. You're right. Good point, man. <laughs> my bad, my bad. Yeah. But they always put like the shittiest stories, like the big story, like they always have a celebrity thing. Yeah. And the one celebrity story that they had recently is like how all these celebrities like accept their transgender gay children. And it's like- which was like, it's like condescending because it's kind of like, ah, come on, it is weird that they're gay or trans, but come on, a civil shepherd loves her yeah. gay daughter, so you should. But the thing that pissed me off is what they have on there today is this dude, he's a, all he is, I thought it could, he was in the World Cup, some Iranian soccer player. His name is Amir Nazir Azani. Mm. I thought he was on the Iranian World Cup team. He is not. He's just some uh, shitty, uh, Plays in some club league. Okay. And they're saying he's sentenced to death. He got sentenced because mm-hmm. he protested uh, this the, chick, yeah. Maza Amani, who was wearing her hijab. Yeah. She wouldn't wear a hijab, so they beat the shit out of her. And then they were, I thought he was going to pull it up here. But um, yeah. she wouldn't wear the, She wouldn't wear yeah. her hijab. Yeah. And then they said, like, she suddenly uh, had heart problems and died. Right. Just like that like, reporter. No, yeah. You see that guy? Yeah. The but reporter so, who uh, was t- yeah. re- re- read an article about Qatar having human rights issues. And, and, then and he suddenly died? Yeah. Dylan, can you pull that up, by the way? Uh, Amir Nazir. Asserti, the Iranian soccer player. Just he was an Iranian uh, soccer player. And he was uh, protesting that she died. <laughs> yeah, well, here's the thing. Here's where they leave it out. The way yeah. that the, if you look at the headlines, it makes it seem like he's like this World Cup soccer player. And then he was just protesting this. Uh, so the thing. thing that upsets you most about the story is that they've uh, inflated no, he, his uh, stature in the soccer world. Well, not only that, <laughs> but the protest that he was at, they killed three police officers. Yeah. So. Yeah, this uh, yeah, this guy. So he was out of pro- the way they make it sound is like he was just innocently protesting. Yeah, I don't know. So, I don't so know wait, the real wait, wait. story. Just, just so we're on the same page. You heard all these facts about him being at this protest. Yeah, three cops dying, the woman having a sudden no, no, no. They, you don't know that until you click on the article. But I'm saying, so you got through all that information, and yeah. what upset you was the misleading thing about him being in the World Cup. 
No, they made it <laughs> yeah. seem. He's no, like, they made it seem like he was a world. He's not. He's like he yeah. plays on some club soccer team. Yeah, some B level, low There's level. There's dead cops. Which is a fine. woman is found and missing. And the, he's like, he's not even on the uh, national team. No, but he's not. They make it sound like because they want fucking clickbait. <laughs> Look, they make it seem like he's this soccer player union. He plays on like B league, not even real teams. Yeah, it's like if some guy like playing bar league soccer. Yeah, and that's what it is. And I don't think that I don't think I don't think guys. his uh, level, what level he's at in soccer, is the story. Yeah. That he was They're... sentenced to death. Yeah. I think is the important part. Yeah, he's sentenced to death, but they made it sound like he was just innocently protesting. No, they killed three. He's like, who cares if he's sentenced to death? He's not even on a good team. <laughs> yeah. It's not like the World Cup's going to be affected. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. It's... <laughs> <laughs> but the way they made it seem like it's a well, they're also you know they are it's clickbait. It's clickbait where you're trying to I make clicked. you're I'm trying. Mad to, I clicked. You wouldn't have clicked on the story if you didn't think he was a good player. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought he like did, well, I thought he like made a stand at the World Cup or something. DeAndre yeah. Jordan then, sentenced to death. Oh fuck, maybe <laughs> yeah. if it was <laughs> yeah. somebody, Kevin it Durant. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I just thought that was insane that the dude... Now, what were you saying? There's a similar story? Oh, uh, there was a reporter who okay. was like a well-known ESPN, like, soccer reporter who, right. like, died mysteriously on the sideline after writing articles about Qatar's uh, human rights violations. He was wearing, like, a gay pride shirt They there. wouldn't let him in the first day, and then he and got sick. Yeah. S he suddenly got sick, and then he suddenly died. Yeah. What's this dude's name? Grant Wall. Grant Wall. Oh, I saw that. Yeah. He also covered a lot of college basketball, too. So okay. maybe if you're yeah, yeah, yeah. more familiar yeah. with but that. But I saw one. it. He was born in 1974, because I saw the thing, yeah. 1974 to 2022. Yep. But he there mysteriously he died. That's yeah. It's kind of like your story, Ray. He just, wrote a just letter for, yeah. about somebody beating the shit out of yeah. his gay rights, and yeah. then his teacher called the cops. Yeah. He was on ESPN. <laughs> if he, I mean, if he was on ESPN+, Plus and they tried to say he was on ESPN, then I'd have a real problem that with the article. That would be article. the issue with the that story. That would be the big <laughs> issue. <laughs> but, he, dude, that's insane. So they killed the dude. Yeah, and, and they're not looking for any answers. No one's giving a shit. Or who would? Just... Qatar, their government, their police. Yeah, why the hell? How, how would you guys FIFA handle that? Who would... accepted Qatar's bribe? And yeah, was like yeah, we could have the World Cup here. Yeah. Oh, they Dude. have the World Cup there. It's in their country. You can't fuck around. Are you gonna? Are we gonna invade another country because they killed a guy? And they Dude, do have that's insane. Huh? They do have some oil. Yeah, that's insane. They're over there dealing with real issues on the other side of the. <laughs> globe yeah and here we are uh, we make walking our... out of schools because a uh, yeah. teacher quoted a rap lyric we make our years own ago. we make our own issues in america for the most part most of the issues we have are things we do to ourselves it's the rich man's plate we don't have enough issues so we make our own yeah like i like it. i had real issues my dad beat the shit out of me yeah <laughs> it didn't work right <laughs> we're still here yeah. you're still cracking yeah, yeah, jokes yeah. no i don't give a shit i just mm. thought uh but it's a different day I mean, and age, man. I mean, they may be, like, killing reporters on the sideline or sentencing other players to death, but as long as they don't have any mean tweets from 10 years ago, yeah, I'm okay yeah, with yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> have you guys heard about the Abu Dhabi uh, thing that's going on now? No, what's Abu so, like, Dhabi? All, that sounds like a cartoon. People are saying the, the wealth the of country. Qatar. So this country, yeah, with rich oil barons is hitting up these Instagram influencers and getting them to come there for a one night stand. And it's like they get another girl to be like, hey, I've done this before. You get paid twenty thousand dollars. You got to spend one night with one guy. And it's just usually ends with them getting tied up and shit in the mouth like over and over and over again. And then like significantly mo less money than it's who, who, who's doing that so far They're getting I, female influencers. Oh, no, yeah, I don't so care like, if it's female or male. I like them yeah. doing this to all influencers. Yeah. <laughs> like I am. I was signed me up for this. I yeah. fucking like these guys are my new favorite people. But who yeah, are they like rich oil barons who just the same kind of thing. Like they yeah. just have so much money. They don't know how to find excitement. So they convince like Instagram influencers and, and they then, shit in their mouths. Yep. Yeah. These guys are my new heroes. Yeah. All what? these, like, Saudi Arabia pays, like, $100 million or whatever to WWE to do shows over there. They have so much money. And I feel like the actual people, when you see any of the shows, they're just fans who are watching a show. And, the, like, I, I feel bad for the people when people are like, oh, we shouldn't uh, be doing this. And I'm like, well, the average person there just wants to see a live show. And I got feel bad taking it away from them but it also feels a little dirty yeah <laughs> like when 10 percent of the population's just yeah. like yeah let's cut off all women's heads yeah and then the rest are like we want to watch the rock yeah <laughs> <laughs> well that is insane like they killed a woman because she wouldn't wear a hijab yeah is it i'm even pronouncing that right hijab. i mean where does that bitch get H -I -J -A -B. off okay getting out here putting hijab. her bare hair yeah. out in the yeah open
What's that? I was I was taking the hard stance, being like, where does she get off being out here with her hair in the open, walking around? Yeah, I'm not saying she should be shit. killed, but she shouldn't fucking be yeah, doing like, that. You know, you got to remind yeah. her, cover up a bit. Yeah, I'm not saying she should be killed or anything. I'm moderate on yeah. the issue here. <laughs> yeah, How but you... I'm just saying we got to do something they... about these women walking around without their hijabs. Yeah, and they broke the golden rule. They hit her too hard. She forgot the lesson. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Uh, <laughs> sp- speaking of women, that are, I I don't know. I watched that whole Casey Anthony thing. Yeah, she's uh, still hot, the right? Show on Peacock. <laughs> I don't. She is still hot. Yes. Okay. She, did it's you really want... a battle of the early two thousands queens lately? Because Lindsay Lohan's back. Really? And it's like Lindsay Lohan or Casey Anthony. Who What's do you Lindsay want? Lohan doing? She just did a Netflix Christmas movie, mm. and honestly, wasn't terrible. Yeah. Like it's a lot of slapstick stuff. Very Mean Girl esque yeah. kind of stupid I don't know witty what, lines. But... In my head, this may be fucked up. I feel like uh, I take Casey Anthony over Lindsay Lohan. I feel like it's fucked up killing your baby, but a child star is probably even more fucked up. Yeah, she's Dude. definitely been through some shit. But I, I've been watching not only like that, the whole thing about, first of all, Casey Anthony, she first, she moved in with a uh, defense lawyer once she got off. She moved in with a defense lawyer. Then they're going to write a oh, test. That, that guy's the king. No, yeah, hell yeah. yeah. He's like, I'll no, get listen, you off, and then you're no. going to get me off. You know I, I, think, I'm I, think I, I think I'm going to get into law just so I can defend a hot girl who killed someone. Yeah. <laughs> So then that's how I'm going to meet my commercial. Wife. Have you killed a baby? Are you hot? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Call Marin Associates. <laughs> so they had a falling out. So then she. Oh, it didn't work out so sad. <laughs> no, no. So then she Tell moved in. Tell me she didn't in. get pregnant. <laughs> So then she moved in with the private investigator that helped get her off. Hell yeah. So now they're living together. Nice. And now she works as a private investigator for him. So imagine if you hire a private investigator and fucking Casey Anthony shows up. Yeah. She's a private investigator Someone now. who knows how to get the job done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is where you screwed up last time. Yeah. How, how would you believe her? Like, First of all, she's so full of shit. Did you know yeah, she... Yeah, she's a woman. Do you, do you think you're there to like... For the conversations, yeah. I think the, you're uh, just there to put your penis inside of her. T- <laughs> she does. She she still says she didn't do it. Like, what's her defense of the? Whole no, thing? that's the other thing too. Like, she they talked to her about afterwards. it. Really? <laughs> yeah. She's like, I didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> she, she, her whole thing is she's claiming her dad did it. That her dad. She's mm. saying her dad used to molest her, and then her dad started molesting her daughter. And his her dad was molesting her daughter one night and molested her too intensely. He accidentally suffocated her, and then wanted to make it look like she was drowning. And that's what happened. And that's how she died. It's fucking a bullshit story. Yeah. But she's so full of shit. But she her, her two say her dad probably did molest her based off that whole moving in with the defense attorney and then private investigator thing. Yeah, she's got daddy issues. There's some significant. Significant daddy uh, issues going. I mean, is it in my oh, no, world? No, no, no. Sure. That's what I look for. But. Her dad's insane. Like, her dad, when they were in jail, they started a foundation, 1-800-MISSING-CHILDREN. I don't know if that was... But then they got a yacht. A yacht. They got everyone to donate money to find Kaylee. And then they bought this $2 million yacht. And then they... That just had okay. one eight hundred missing kids on it, yeah. and they just sailed it around the ocean all day, just looking for kids. Just yeah, just drinking it's liquor. Like OJ on the golf course looking yeah. for the real killer, but with a yacht. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly what it is. <laughs> that is exactly what yeah. they did. Is they just drove around on this yacht every day. Yeah, obviously not looking for children, but just saying like, oh no, we're just out here. They. A lot of kids drown, so we're just going to yeah. drive out here in this yacht and drink. That's an awesome cover out there, looking for missing children while you're fishing. It's like, well, I mean, you can't look for missing children all day. Yeah. Let's take a break and go fishing. We'll look for missing children a little bit later. <laughs> it's called multitasking. Yeah, we're also hey, looking for the kids. Yeah, yeah. I and got I got like a toy fish on the bottom of this hook. It's bait for kids. Yeah. <laughs> they Can also didn't uh, sail out. To, the kids did not swim out in the middle of the ocean either. Yeah, <laughs> like why is a yacht in the middle They're of the looking ocean? For Jose Fernandez. <laughs> yeah. That's a joke just for you, right? Uh, Can you imagine the letter she wrote or the story she wrote in her 10th grade English class? Oh, her dad? yeah. Oh, yeah. Didn't well, that's how the thing, Anthony, too. She said none of it. you after class. <laughs> well, that's the other thing, too. She said none of this, like, growing up or whatever. All this came out after the fact. Like, dude, she's a complete liar. She okay. makes up her yeah. own. But her, her you might, you thing. may not bring that's that like up. the Kevin Spacey. He gets caught. He's like, "All right, I admit, everybody, I'm gay." <laughs> <laughs> Casey, Anthony, you killed your child. Yes, I was molested as a child. <laughs> I thought that I thought that was gonna work for a while. Just the "I'm gay" excuse. Yeah, I thought that was gonna be the great. Everybody gets out of jail free card. Yeah, it's gotta be. Oh, I'm bi now. Yeah, and that's all it takes. And then that, that so, would be awesome, right? 
If we made that the rule, all you gotta yeah. do is kiss another guy and you're out of trouble. Yeah. Louis comes back, kisses Dave Chappelle, everybody's happy. Yeah. <laughs> That's um and then the other thing is before this Peacock series came out, she was at a bar. She was at a bar and she's dating some ex cop and she gets in a fight. She has a type. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So she gets in a fight with the dude's ex-girlfriend, yeah. and the girl throws a drink at her. And, like, Casey Anthony calls the police to, uh, to fight. So the police show up there. So it took her 31 days to call the cops when her daughter's missing. It took her 10 seconds to call the cop when some woman <laughs> throws a drink at her. Mm. And, uh, and then she wanted to file a complaint on the late, like, a, a, a restraining order. You don't call 911. 911 comes, and then you file the restraining order to them. Mm. She, she really thinks that... How old was Kaylee Anthony when she died? Three. Three. Mm. And she used to duct tape her to the coffee table. So what? she'd go out partying. She would duct tape her kid to the coffee table so she can go enter a hot body contest. Did she win? <laughs> she, uh, she was that's definitely... one of those stories. If she wins, it's like, oh, look at how hard she worked for her exactly, goals. Exactly. Yeah. If she doesn't win, then it's like, ah, oh, she's a terrible That's the part mom. you never hear about those stories about this person. They had a family and they really sacrificed a lot to still follow their dream. Meanwhile, the baby's there duct taped to a coffee <laughs> table. <laughs> <laughs> oh. so, I don't know. I just think it's insane. I think. Uh, I, I watched a documentary and I was like, oh, I think it is the dad's a dirtbag. But then after like watching all the other stuff, all the other documentaries yeah. about her, it's it's her. She's out of her mind, dude. Well, I mean, you could she's become insane. a murderer because your dad's a dirtbag. Like it's not mutually exclusive. I don't think I don't think it's her dad's fault. Not that I mean. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say I think it is her dad's fault. Yeah, you think, I think it's her he dad? Fucked her up royally. I don't think he killed the. Kaylee necessarily, but I think he created the circumstances. Well, what about Kaylee what about die. her brother who hasn't gone out m and murdered kids? What's the story he, with he, her brother? He, he grew up in that sexy. All, right. <laughs> <laughs> All that sexiness went to Casey. Yeah, he's got that rational male brain. Uh, he's like, oh, you molest me, I'm gonna stop. <laughs> All right, Casey Anthony wants to hang out with you tonight, and it's yes. just a two. You would you would do that, really? One hundred percent. Yeah, I'd be I'd be scared shitless. I'm not a baby. I can defend myself. Dude, you only have one arm. Try and, don't try and duct tape me to a table. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm not going to arm wrestle her, but she can't duck <laughs> me to a table. Duct tape me to a table. I'll get out of that. You would definitely fuck Casey Anthony. Um, yes. uh, oh, if she wanted to fuck me and said, I'll duct tape you to the table and uh, then blow you, then I'll do it. <laughs> You're... I'd duct, my tel duct tape myself to the table. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm on board. Yeah? Yeah. What's the most insane woman that... Uh, that you would hook up with? Who, who Who's someone that's crazy out of their mind? <laughs> I have ex-girlfriends that are on that. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. I mean, I throw, it, throw it out there. Lindsay who, who, Lohan I threw out there because that's like my 10. I'm hoping yeah. our levels of fame eventually cross at mm, some point, like when yeah. she's on the real down, the words spiral. Yeah. That's what you're hoping for? Maybe like she she's all drugged out? Maybe she could something due to mm. meth. Yeah, then right in my wheelhouse. All right, here's the question. Would you fuck Kaylee Anthony? Uh, unfortunately, I will never get that opportunity. Uh, okay. Who's stopping you? Right. Yeah. yeah, the problem with it is that she's not alive anymore. Yeah. <laughs> if she were alive, Ray would be all over that. Yeah, how old would she years? be? She, no, she'd only be like 50. No, obviously. Uh, no, dude, she's too insane, though. Casey Kaylee Anthony? Anthony. No, <laughs> yeah, can you, no can Casey Anthony. you imagine how messed up she'd be? Yeah, she's like, really messed you, up. You seriously... You're just talking about fucking. I'm not going to date them. Uh, I'd, sure, I'd date her. You would? Why not? Yeah, I could use mm. the fame. What, yeah, what, what's the most insane woman you've dated, Bobby? Uh, Molly, me... that Molly chick I referenced earlier. All right, well, we, tell uh, me about Molly. I mean, how'd you meet Molly? I can read you the latest correspondence if you want. Oh, there's late, and so it's still uh, oh, in no, contact. How long ago was this? Uh, this morning, I got a text. Oh, okay. So yeah, it still is kind of ongoing. Not that you're seeing each other, but there's uh, correspondence going on still. I um, uh, nah, out of the blue. See the audacity of continuing to message me and trying to make passes at me after I tell you it's just not healthy for me to talk to you is just astounding. And this was after, you said, like, You hey, said that no, to her? No, this is me getting a response after, like, she said something like, text me back. Like, she it was, said, she, like, asked a question and then I She responded. said, text me back and then told I, you that you need to stop I texting took, her? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I took the bait. <laughs> I took the bait. Uh, I don't want to hear anything from you. I already know you're an immature coward and man child. And that, we can so you far, get where this is so going. So far, I'm on her side. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 100% yeah. <laughs> uh, justified, but just, yeah. that's probably the craziest. Wh where'd you meet this lady? Uh, we worked at a camp together. Um, her dad ran a camp for kids on ventilators. 
So like you give them a normal week at camp and we met there and we became friends and started dating like after we knew each other a while. Yeah. I mean, the kids aren't going anywhere, so you got a lot of time to fool around with her. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. (laughs) The kid's not going to come off the ventilator to be like, what are you guys doing over there? No. And then like, uh, yeah, no, just nuts. You know how that is. Dude, I got a random text from a girl that I talked to for like five minutes three years ago. We exchanged numbers. We never went out. And then she just sent me a picture. She goes, she goes, I realized this was you. And it's just a picture of her phone number on a bathroom wall. And it says, for uh, like, uh, if you're a dude, uh, call for a good you know, time. She's like, yeah. call, call Casey. She loves hanging out with dudes that aren't me. And someone like wrote that and put her that's phone number. That's pretty funny. It and is she, pretty funny. Yeah. But like, that's also crazy to come out. Let's say I did do that to come out of the woodwork three years later. Why I know you, you thought did that. you wrote that note. Yeah, That's... out of the blue, three years ago. Did you ask for like how she knew? Oh, I, I didn't write that. I don't know. Did no, you no, respond? Like, you didn't respond at what all. What was your right? evidence? I, 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 I did respond. Um, I almost yeah. I may not even could... respond to a message like that. Three years ago, I think you did this thing. I'm like, fuck this. I'm not no, even no, engaging. Yeah. That's, that's well past the state yeah. statute of limitations. Yeah, but that was. Um... Can we call her quick? Let's get her on the phone. Yeah. <laughs> There For a is. good time, <laughs> you, yeah, you guys can look at it. But yeah, that's why I responded back to her. But yeah, it's uh, isn't that insane? That's literally was three years ago. Someone yeah. just wrote her phone number and said, uh, "Call Casey. She loves hanging out with dudes that aren't me." Yeah, and which is pretty funny. Yeah. Whoever wrote that, it's hilarious. It's yeah. very funny. Yeah, she should have known it wasn't you because it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That should have been like clue number one. Obviously, that's funnier than any joke I have. Yeah. So yeah, I can't compete. Like yeah. she's like, yeah, look, I fuck someone way funnier than you. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's insane. And I, I responded back. All I said is, serious note, I think you got the wrong guy. If I remember correctly, we talked once for like five minutes two years ago. We never even went on a date or even met up, which is true. Yeah. And then here you can let's show you. Wait, so it took me a year to figure out this shit was you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I see it one more time. So that's in, that's insane. Yeah, that's and yeah, if you barely talk, that's even more insane. Yeah. Do not text her. <laughs> no, don't. <laughs> God damn it, that was too obvious. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> do not, yeah. Do not, what were you gonna What were you gonna text? I got still miss them tits out of titties out. Oh uh, uh, no, don't do that. Yeah, it's worth a uh, shot. Shoot a shot, Ray. She mi- obviously missed you. Yeah, she's been thinking about you. You know, Ray? My, my good friend Gino Bisconti says love and hate. Oh Jesus, and I'm not going with anything. Opposites. Yeah, I'm gonna the go with of loves and difference. I'm gonna go with the opposite of whatever the hell Gino says. <laughs> yeah, no, that's why I said it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Jesus, that, talk about fucking insane. Who's the most insane person you met? Like, I had a roommate that killed his mom, which I've talked about a bunch of times. Oh, you lived with the comic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You lived yeah, we with were, him. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah, know yeah. you lived with him. And he was actually a nice dude. He's not even close to one of my worst roommates. Yeah, I, <laughs> I knew I knew him. Yeah. He always seemed really cool. He's a really nice guy. Yeah. yeah. He's just schizophrenic. Maybe his mom was a cunt. No, his mom was actually a very sweet lady. Was. Was. Yeah. <laughs> very Jesus. Sweet. <laughs> was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that was, uh, yeah, he called me the day after he did it because he was, like, coming back to New York City, and he wanted to crash on my couch. Mm. And I wasn't here, and my roommates at the time were both introverts. Like, yeah. they never left their room. But he, And the only reason why I changed the lock on my door is because the roommate I had after him yeah. didn't pay rent for, mm. like, three months. Yeah. And we would just leave our rent checks on the door. And my landlord, after he could have told me after one month of not getting all three checks— could have said, hey, I'm only only got two thirds of the rent. He waited till three months. Yeah. And then I said to my roommate, I'm like, dude, what's up? And then I, I, I said that to him at Snowdonia, because you remember yes. I lived uh in Astoria. Da- downstairs from uh Snow- yeah. upstairs from Snowdonia. And he, I go with I'm like, dude, you haven't paid rent in the last few months? And he goes, uh motions for me to go outside with him. I go outside and he goes, Well, you gotta come in here and blow up my spot, bro. Right then I knew one. I'm, he's out. I'm kicking him out. One and two. I know I'm never getting that money. The fact yeah. that he handled it like that. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's nuts. That he. I mean, it is kind of a fun. Power By the way, play the dude. Like, why are you busting my spot yeah. up here? Yeah, yeah. How dare you? 
Oh, he was also out That's of his mind. Nuts. He he died a year later of a drug overdose. Yeah, I yeah. Was... I've had friends with drug overdoses. I've known. I've yeah. dated girls who have mental health issues. I've da- like yeah. I'm friends with cutter girls who were cutting themselves. I've had. I've seen a lot. But, I haven't seen. I haven't been yeah. close to someone who killed their mom before. So yeah. that's. Uh, so the. Uh, so anyways, I, I got him out of the. I, I couldn't get him out. I, I wanted to keep him in as long as I could so I can get the back rent. You know, because right. I'm the only one on the lease. So that's coming yeah. down on yeah, me. Yeah, out of you. So I wanted to keep him around trying to get, but he, he wasn't giving me any rent. So what I did, I like, dude, I had to kick him out. And then he just would come back in the middle of the night because he had the keys. Mm. So because of him, I changed the lock Yeah. to the door. Oh. Mm. Because of him, not knowing that six months later, the guy who just killed his mom a few hours earlier was coming back trying to get in yeah. to that oh, same. God. And my roommates are such two introverts that you're like so glad to be rid of this crazy person. You're like, all right, the guy who killed his mom, can you come live with me now? I, I've been, I'm too tired of dealing with these idiots. <laughs> Checks were always Wild on time. Out. But yeah. my roommates are such introverts. They would hear someone banging on the door, which is like literally the door right here for yeah. the studio, and they still wouldn't answer it. Mm. That's how fucking insane my two introvert roommates were, yeah. that they would like let him get away, like let yeah. him just bang on the door, and they not even like curiosity, what do you want? Who are yeah. you? To just, uh, it do may that. have saved their lives, though. So it might not have been the yeah, most insane yeah. thing in the world. I'm not going to open my door anymore. No, but I'm just saying, like, that's how <laughs> what introverts are like. Yeah, well, what, yeah. Some of my roommates. What's your worst roommate stories? Uh, I lived with a buddy from high school, and then it just became hell. Like, we went to college together, and we were roommates. And he joined a fraternity, and would like come back at four in the morning, but not do fun stuff. Like, he would come back and be like, "All right, we're going to play chess now." It's like, no, like, we should be getting laid now. Like, we should be doing fun stuff. And he just, it became, like, an all-out war between the two of us. Oh, really? Mm. Yeah. It was fun. Always yeah. living in enemy territory. Yeah. It got to the point where we used Because he wanted cardboard. to play chess with you? No, no, no. Like, I'm just saying he, he changed his entire personality. became, like, he joined, I think it was Beta Theta Pi, which is, like, the rich Sounds business, like a beta. All like, right. rich <laughs> That was pretty good, right? Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't get it at first, but... Yeah. Like it was like the rich. You had to be a professional. All of our people are presidents and stuff, mm. and like get your life on track. And I was like, no, yeah. we were going to be the degenerates who got drunk together and played yeah. FIFA till five a.m. Yeah, there you go. You know, oh, FIFA games got wild in my dorm. I'm not even a big soccer fan, yeah. but we just got competitive. Furniture was broken over games of FIFA. Oh, yeah, FIFA it was, was a fun game. Yeah, friendships yeah. lived FIFA. and died. Yeah. I remember uh, we would have just like some random playlist on, and whatever songs would be playing when certain goals were scored became people's like good luck songs. Yeah, I remember Biggie about, Smalls, Notorious Thugs, listening uh, to that before final. Like, hey, this got me that goal last night. Maybe it'll help me remember some chemistry. Them, some of them we would just put on like as a joke, and then it just became, "I need a thousand miles" by Vanessa Carlton <laughs> every time I am playing FIFA. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, if that song's not on the playlist, I'm breaking yeah. this controller. Yeah. What What's your shittiest roommate story? I don't, uh, my freshman year of college, I had a roommate who we really didn't, uh, we just didn't vibe. He was like, it wasn't anything like particularly entertaining or fun. It was just staying up all night reading stuff. And then during the day wanted to sleep and have us keep the lights off. It was one of those, uh, um, right, that's... yeah, it was just inconsiderate taking like really long showers. And I was like, still, it was a triple room. The way they did it in my college was freshmen are in a triple halfway through the year or so you get de-tripled as people drop out or whatever. And uh, I remember me, I was just like, I didn't know the other two people, so I was like, I have no connection. So in the first week of the year, I was like, all right, when we get de-tripled, I'll move out, because I didn't have any reason to be there. Right. But then me and one of the guys got along really well, and the third guy did not. And clearly it was like that. And it got to a point where we were just like praying to get de-tripled so we can get him out of there. And then we kind of like had to talk like, hey, we really get along, so I feel like we're probably going to stay. And then our RA came and told us, oh, your third roommate, because uh, we got de-tripled. And they're right. like, oh, well, he said he really enjoys the company and doesn't want to move out. So you were oh, stuck with him. Oh, no. Um, we kind of like said to our RA, like, we really want to get rid of him. And eventually he like, he did move he out. Oh, he did oh, move out. So yeah. Tough. Well, because also we, um, I mean, we fucked with him too. In addition to, he was like, our way of dealing with him being inconsiderate and shitty was to uh, basically just be like uh, junior high school bullies. 
Um, um, which I've never been. Did before. you get bullied? Uh, I was in the middle. I uh, sometimes got kids make fun of my voice. Um, I got picked on a little bit, and then there you were got your arm broken. That guy uh, got fast yeah. to you. Uh, my little brother got picked on a lot, and I would get in fights with people who made fun of my little brother. Right. So I was like standing up to bullies. Also, I was never like the bully, right. but the, I mean there was. It's just one of those. I don't know. There's probably things where I thought I was messing with the kid, and he felt like I was bullying him. I got. I'm did, sure there's. Did you that. get bullied, Bobby? I got bullied no, a little bit. Not I mean, we we didn't really have bullying at our school. Yeah, when I was a freshman in college, the um, so our what, what's above the RA? Who's in charge of all the RAs? Whatever she is, the like, residence hall director, or that whatever type the of hell thing, she yeah. was. But she was this hot chick, and like the kids that lived on the floor with me. One night, she left her door open. Yeah, and like I was. Um, like the, just so you know, before you finish this story, there is no statute of limitation on rape. Yeah, just proceed um, carefully. I'm glad you're here, Bobby. All right, so, <laughs> um, so the the kids that were also in my dorm, they are um, they picked me up and they threw me in her room, in her room, like in the middle of the night. And part of me is they're like they're sitting there, like they're thinking it's hilarious, like ha ha. And me, I'm kind of like, I'm cool with this like, yeah. you know yeah, I, I have whatever. to pretend i have to pretend like yeah. oh this is horrible don't do it. but i'm like i'm fine i'm just not it's not gonna be on me if i see her naked i yeah. didn't do this like yeah. uh so they threw me in her room and like uh close the door so i get out I couldn't get out and i turn on like she wasn't in there so i just wow. i just walked out the other door because yeah. she had like two doors yeah but like part that of me sound that bad yeah yeah no what well, part of me was like they're like oh yeah this is gonna be great i was yeah. like part of me is like go ahead and do it what do i give a shit I, yeah no, what, we what's would gonna happen. I'm gonna see some hot chick. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah, we would like mess with him and like wait. He was also he was kind of a psycho actually in hindsight. The um, he, I remember like the first week I had like a friend of a friend from my high school who I met up with and then made friends with his friends. My roommate, the one, the annoying one, he didn't have any of those friends. So I was like, why don't you come with me and meet up with these people who I'm kind of now friends with? And I just remember we were hanging out one night and he tells a story as if it happened to him. And it was like word for word a story from a Mike Birbiglia special. And oh, I remember, no. I, like, I was, uh, I wasn't doing comedy at the time, but I was, I'd watched Comedy Central, and I heard him tell the story, and I'm like, "What do you do?" Everyone else is asking him follow up questions, and he's just saying the punchlines from Birbiglia's joke. Oh no! Um, and I just remember, it's Wh- which like, joke was it? The um, well, what I should have said was nothing. Uh, yeah. Um, from like an old special visit. He's talking about yeah, the yeah. moving. Yes, He's the rapist. Bringing in a mattress. Like a seem, rapist wouldn't have a mattress. What like I that. should have like, said was nothing. Instead, I said what you, I like. You'd he, be surprised. You'd be surprised. Yeah, that story, word for word, the whole setup to it and everything. Like he had memorized it. And I remember, like, what do you do in that situation? I don't want to be like, hey, fuckface, I heard the special. Right, right. <laughs> like it's just a guy who I've just met with other friends who I've just kind of made friends with, and they're all having a nice time. So and I didn't really say anything. So you, uh, you have you to go sleep with him? him that night, like in your room. Yeah. So you can't like call him out too hard. That you don't too. know him well. And <laughs> um, and also I just met him. And then as the weeks went on and he started being a jerk, I would kind of have fun with his obviously made up stories. Uh, um, I actually, I remember this specifically. He said, this is before I'd ever thought of doing stand up. He said he had done stand up comedy where uh, in front of his family uh, in Greece at their family reunions every year. And uh, me and my roommate, the way it was set up, it was and like you do two- Birbiglia jokes. No, I just <laughs> so it's like album, come the, walk with me or whatever. The way the room was set up was like two top bunks and one bottom bunk. And me and my roommate are on the top bunks. He's on the bottom bunk, and he starts telling us about how he's done all these stand-up comedy shows for his family in Greece. And we we were like, all right, tell us some of the jokes. And he does. I don't remember any. I just remember none of them. I none of them. They were. They didn't even resemble jokes. It wasn't like we could make the fake laugh because we didn't know when the joke was over. Oh. oh um, and he and uh, but then I kind he's of probably reciting other people's jokes. If he's doing well, Birbiglia's jokes, yeah, maybe probably... and maybe I didn't recognize them. But then he said, um, he's, it's probably funnier if I uh, when I did it in Greek is probably a language barrier. And then me and my roommate look at each other at the top over the top bunks to each other, and he can't see that we're kind of giving each other a look and I'm like tell it to us in Greek and we'll see if it makes sense <laughs> and he would tell us he would just start speaking Greek whenever he reached punctuation we both just burst out laughing uh, as if it was the funniest okay. thing we'd ever heard god damn <laughs> and so we were the, like tell us another one tell us another one went on for like so an hour didn't, so you didn't know this kid until you got to school 
No, we. D- I Sorry. hadn't met either of these other two, and uh, um, we met, and then after a few weeks, one of them was very like just inconsiderate Dude. as a roommate and just completely full of shit. Is in it hi- the Greek guy? Yeah, the Greek guy? All right. well, in he probably hindsight, doesn't know. He's probably but in hindsight, different culture. Not really. He spoke English pretty uh, well. He grew up here, but I mean, he just out his name was Stavros Halkis. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> in hindsight, I'm just like I think he he was just insecure and uh, trying to make friends. But at the time, I was like 18, and the kid's annoying, so yeah. we were just like, let's fuck with him. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And that's how yeah. you learn. Like that. That's yeah. how he learns not to be. Dude, there was a I don't know. And weird. I, yeah, maybe it's too late in life. Maybe I don't know if he learns not to be annoying and weird, or he's like I had the. He, maybe he's asked about his worst roommate story. He's like these guys kept fun, about you. Yeah, making yeah, fun yeah, of me yeah. for being. He used to do. He used to talk about how great he was at capoeira. He was taking capoeira class on campus, and he said he would teach me some of the moves. And every time I would do I it, I would know just what capoeira is like laying on your. It's like dance fighting, and I he dance was, fighting. Yeah. So in right. Brazil. Back in the day, they, um, they, this group of people who were like slaves and they were trying to plan a revolt, they weren't allowed to fight or they weren't allowed to train to fight. So they did what looked like dance so the people in charge of them that's wouldn't be able the movie, to tell. That's from the movie The Big Lebowski. That's when what, he goes, you go to the dance recital. That's the origin of uh, Capoeira is that they, the, were, uh, they were, they were, it looked uh, enough like dance. They could say that they weren't training uh, to fight. But he would like say, "Oh, you could do a thing where you're on your back and you jump up to your feet." And he would be near me trying to do it, and, and just because he, he was yeah. annoying, I would jump up and purposely kick him every single time. <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> there was a dude though that I went to on that same floor when I was a freshman. He was a gay dude. He was obviously a gay dude, but like we didn't know he was. gay. I could tell you right now, he's gay. Yeah. But I remember like sometimes I'd I be, sucked his dick. I'll tell you, he was gay. No, but he, I remember he like came like a gay guy. But sometimes I'd just be like. Uh, like watching Sports Center, like laying on the couch or something, and like he would come and like lay and like, and I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? And it would just yeah. creep me the fuck out. And it's lay like, on top of you, like lay next to me. And I'm like, what are you? This isn't what like. Men this do. is not yeah. Yeah. at all. Like and you're I, spooning. Yeah, and yeah. I, I I remember I never called him out on, but I'm like, dude, like I just got up and yeah. like, n- not 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 today, buddy. I'm like, not not cool. I've um I told this story on my podcast before. My uh, co-host love uh, referencing this. Um, I had a kid who probably sexually assaulted me. Um, when I was a teenager, um, it was uh, a kid in my Hebrew school who um saw I had just gotten like the best of Undertaker DVD a w an old <laughs> WWE DVD and I had the shirt and everything and he said why don't you come over to my place and we can watch some of it I never watched wrestling right. before but I'd like to watch it and get into it a little bit right. And uh, we go over there, and within, like, 10 minutes, I'm very excited about being able to show the greatness of The Undertaker, my favorite wrestler, to another kid. Within about 10 minutes, he asked me if he could see my penis. Um, that's obviously, in hindsight, what he wanted me there for. Yeah. Um, I didn't realize it at the time. I was just how, like, How long Fuck. was your penis out before you realized yeah. this was, <laughs> this was probably just, not the, like... It yeah. was, so, anyway, she's looking at it for, like, five minutes. No, and I'm I, like, wait a minute. No, I never is, took it out because I was too a... busy trying to show him how awesome The Undertaker is. He's like, can I see so a penis? So you didn't even, like... No, he's like, can yeah, I see yeah. a penis? I'm like, no, Undertaker's about to be Psycho Sid at WrestleMania 13 right. for the <laughs> WWF Championship. You're going to really want to focus on this and yeah. stop no, paying attention to my penis. He kept asking me, at a certain point, he's like, Reached over and started like grabbing, like trying to pull my shorts down, and then wow. it was like, yeah, and then I like I left um, way later than I should have because I'm like, we gotta at least get back to the return against Kane at so WrestleMania you were still, 20. Yeah. <laughs> so you were still, you know, I had, I stayed there way too long. I was a tease in hindsight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it wasn't until years later I, I look looked back right, and I, I was like, I don't think he ever wanted to watch the DVD. No, no, yeah. But also on that same note. Like, I think, like, those kids, like, they don't know what to, like, to them, in yeah. their head, they're also, it's like the He's first confused. time. He's confused. It's yeah. the first time you try to make out with a girl, and, like, you're in your own head, like, am I, yeah. what am I supposed to do? Like, you right. think you're doing it. I had the same situation, this kid, Josh, uh, we lived in Vermilion, Ohio, and I was, I was in fifth grade. We moved from fifth grade to sixth grade, so we, we were just getting ready to move, but this is before the summer. I would sleep over his house. Yeah. And um, one night... He he asked to see my penis. See, yeah. I, I I talked to this because Kurt Metzger has a story about this that he did on uh, Comedy Central, and I, I like had and it wasn't until I saw Metzger's thing where I was like, oh, that's the same thing that happened to me. So this kid Josh wanted to see my. He's like, he goes here, I'm going to show you my penis, and then you show me yours. Just so, and I was like, no, and he went to show me his penis. I'm like, no, I don't I don't want to see it. He took it out. I'm like, I don't, don't want to see it or whatever. And then I uh, I also like have anxiety where. I just didn't want to be there anymore, so I called my dad to come pick me up. Yeah. I didn't even put two and two together. I called my dad to come pick me up in the middle of the night. My dad comes, picks me up, 
and then beats the shit out of you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You the I wrote a paper about it. Yeah. Uh, so my dad comes, picks me up, picks me up, and then the next week I'm in school, and that kid Josh doesn't talk to me at all. And I didn't, I didn't even put two and two together yeah. as to why it wasn't. It, it just made no sense. Like, hey, we yeah. were good friends, and now he hates my guts. Yeah. And then one day he just came up to me, and he just punched me in the face twice. Just punched Oof. me in the face. Uh, and then he started crying. He punched him in the face twice, and he started crying, and he ran away. And, like, that's the first time I've ever been punched. And I was like, what? Other than your dad. What? Yeah, other than my dad. Yeah, 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 other than my dad. Uh, my dad didn't punch me till later. Uh, then he would just Until Josh him. told him the story. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and, like, it never occurred to me, like, years later, looking back at it, it's like, oh, that's the reason why he punched me in the face. Like, it was clearly that. Yeah. yeah. Like, he must have thought I told someone or did something or... Yeah. And, like, I never told anyone because, like, I was embarrassed. I, like, I didn't want that yeah. known that the dude was, like, trying to show me his penis. I yeah. was, like... I think the I think the kid who uh, the Undertaker kid I think he's later came out as gay. I hadn't talked to him. We like I think we were still in Hebrew school for like another year only because it was like shortly after our bar mitzvahs. So you're not in that much longer after that. Um, I think later I heard that he came out as gay, but I don't. I mean, why yeah, would you hang out with him? He doesn't like the Undertaker. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, in hindsight, I'm kind of, like I don't feel traumatized or anything by yeah, it. Yeah, I don't feel unless traumatized I, unless either. I can get like a TV show out of talking yeah. about it. Then. But no, I, I. It took me like like you were saying. It took me literally like 20 years later. I was just thinking about. It, I was like, oh wait a minute, that's why yeah. he punched. Like it never occurred to me. Uh, yeah. That's why he punched me at that time. I don't yeah. think I ever had those issues. I think I always just kind of put out a because you like, weren't a hot kid. I wasn't you the guy to show kid. your penis to. Yeah. I'm gonna tell people. Yeah. <laughs> you have snitch vibes. Yeah. Yeah. 100. <laughs> percent They're like Bobby can't keep a secret. Yeah. Ah. Uh... Yeah. I just I remember being so excited that someone who wasn't a wrestling fan wanted me to introduce them to it and thinking about all the best matches to show him and all the times he kept wanting to see my penis and I just was upset that he wasn't paying attention enough to the Undertaker. Yeah. It's buried alive versus Vince McMahon. What are you what are you looking at my dick for? In his yeah. defense though, he saw how excited you were about the Undertaker and he was like, You think that makes you excited? Yeah. Wait till I show you what really makes you excited. Actually, yeah, I was watching too much Undertaker and I got a boner and he noticed. <laughs> like, oh, you see how he pops up? Yeah. I can make something else pop up. Yeah. Oh, man. You never had any scenarios like that, Bobby, where, like, no. you look back and, like, that was just weird as fuck? No, I think, like, my parents were very overprotective of that. Like, and it fucked me up the other way with girls and stuff. Like, I didn't know how to interact with girls until well into college and All things right. like that. Like, Before we get out of here, we're going to get out of here. We're going to get out of here on this note. Bobby, because we gave you stories about weird shit from our past people my okay. roommate that tried to my other roommate that like wouldn't pay rent the mm. kid that made all right we need something you're, you gotta all right, all right i'll tie i'll tie the two things together we got ohio for you and dating cutters for you okay so da i lost dating my cutters I, I lost my virginity i dated girls who cut themselves at cedar point um yeah. it did not go well oh uh, it was kind of like you know I, you don't really know how things work yeah you don't right, know right. condom sizing real millennium and, force yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, we were there riding the grasshopper. Yeah. Um, but you it did not were you go spending well. the night, or this yeah, was yeah, during we the day? Yeah, we were spending the night. Okay. So for graduating college, I got a trip to Cedar Point and mm. took a girl. Well, that's not bad. It's and pretty cool. Cedar Point's pretty yeah. sweet. The virginity loss didn't go well, though. Like yeah. nobody was happy. Things didn't work the way they it, do in the it, movies. It, it never goes well. Right, right. My, you, losing my virginity was horrible too. But she didn't take it well. Um, so on the way home, what do you mean she didn't take it well? What happened? Well, that's where we're getting. That's the story okay. I'm telling, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let me get there. So we're driving home, and she <laughs> interrupts starts... someone's story to say what happened. <laughs> 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 she starts going through my glove box, and she finds a box cutter. Mm. And so she starts cutting her legs as oh, I'm driving Jesus. down the highway. Right. So I can't uh, fight the knife from her. Because I'm driving at like 80 miles an hour. This is after you already had sex, or this is the way there? Yeah, it, this is after we have had sex. This uh, is on the way home. Didn't go well. We didn't get a chance to like try again and figure things out. It was all just kind of a blur. I'm still trying to figure things out. So you're yeah. like driving 80, and so I can't wrestle the knife from her because, again, I'll crash the car. I don't want to pull over and stop because if cops come, like, I'm going to prison. This girl's cutting herself in my car. Yeah. So I found another box cutter in my car, and I was like, all right, if you cut yourself, I'll cut myself. And we started playing, like, cutting chicken on the way to the rest stop where I could pull over and wrestle the knife from her. Jesus. So then we uh, we get to, like, I'm dropping her off. She was still at school. 
like college to be yeah. to clarify. I didn't yes. kidnap some high school student. Um, so I'm dropping her off, and she's like, "Oh, I lied to you." And I'm like, "About about what?" She's like, "Oh, I'm not a virgin. Like I lied to guys all the time. I take their virginities. I don't care about you at all. Like this isn't a thing." And I knew she was just like having a breakdown. I was like, oh, "Okay." Yeah. And she's like, "Okay." And I was like, "Yeah." She's like, "I don't care about you as well." I was like, "Can I ask you a question?" She's like, "Yeah." I was like, "Should I tell other girls we dated or like?" What should we do? And the minute I said other girls, she was like, there'd be other girls, you son of a bitch. And I was like, yeah, you still fucking care. Shut yeah. up. Yeah. Ah, uh, look so at that's, you. So you got to play the crazy game sometimes. Yeah. Right? So what, what, all right, talk about you losing your virginity. How how did it not go well? What was your thing? Uh, so like condom, uh, girth. You need a certain size condom for girth. Otherwise, it cuts off the blood flow and you can't get hard. I didn't know that. So I had the okay. wrong size condoms. And then it was like trying to fit a half inflated balloon in mm. somewhere it didn't want to go. Oh, all right. You know. Yeah. I, I, Plus, I, I'm Catholic. I'm never more Catholic than when my penis won't work. I, uh, yeah. I, you know, that guilt comes out real quick and you go, oh, God, I'm sorry. This is. I, I lied to like my first like real girlfriend and said I had sex before and I hadn't. So I always wussied out when it came time to have sex with her mm. just because like I was like in my own head, like she's going to realize I don't know what I'm doing. So I wussed out like too many times where she dumped me. She dumped me. Yeah. So now I'm back at Bowling Green. That's where I went to school. And I'm oh, yeah. like, I just have to lose my virginity. Fighting bison. Yeah. And uh, I'm like, I just got to lose my virginity. And there's like this wasted 32-year-old woman at the bar buying me dollar Molson ice beers because Molson ice for a dollar back in the 90s. Uh, Actually, probably at Bowling Green, it's still probably dollar for Molson yeah. ice. So she bought me nice some. Town, yeah. And then she like took me back to her place. And uh, she had four. Uh, also in Ohio. Because uh, I used to, like, sell hot dogs at the old Cleveland Stadium. And when you're on food stamps, the the cereal is King Vitamin. And okay. uh, all the black dudes used to sell beer would always, like, make fun of each other. Like, oh, you got that King Vitamin? I never knew what it meant. Then when I walked in her house and saw, like, 12 boxes of King Vitamin like, cereal. This bitch was about to fuck good. Uh, then Look I'm at all like, the King right, Vitamin she's is, got. I was like, all right. And then I, like, stepped over four kids to get into her room. And literally, it was, I just like laid there and just let her fuck me, and I was just happy because I just wanted to get the virginity over with. And then yeah. you stepped over those kids like Iverson on the way. Out. Yes, I did. Yeah, I stepped over <laughs> Iverson like it was yeah. Ty Lue, yeah, just exactly. like I am nice. out of here. And I was just so thankful to just get it over with because it takes you out of your head. Because you think losing your virginity is a big deal, and it's not. It's so no. stupid. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's the biggest thing in the world when you never had sex before. Yeah. T and then, tell yeah. me about you and The Undertaker. How'd you guys lose your virginity? Um, uh, well, later on in the day, we uh, once we got up to Undertaker Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania 25, we just, you know, we couldn't help ourselves. <laughs> How's that not going to turn yeah. on? Um, no, it was like, year, uh, actually, only a few years later. I had, uh, my high school was across the street from a community college in Queens, and so I had a few friends who were like older, and we so would go. To, options. We would go to bars after school because they would an ID during the day. Bell Boulevard in Queens, shout out. Yeah, <laughs> and, cool. um, and so I was the only one in the group who was still a virgin because they were all older. And um, so they, fa they, uh, some girl came up to me and said, "I think you're really cute," and asked if I never had sex before. And I think I started to think about lying, and then she was like, "You haven't." <laughs> and, <laughs> yes. Um, and uh, she said, "I think that's really cute too." And we like went to a hotel. She kind of led the way with wow. everything. Um, that's kind of what this mother of yeah. four did too. She kind of yeah. like led the, and that's what yeah. I needed. I needed yeah. someone to like be like, Fuck yeah, because it. like, it was. Uh, I, I hated it when I was one in control of like yeah. making the moves. Because I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, it's and like you never drove a car before, and like here yeah. you go. Yeah. And uh, it was a magical 45 seconds. And okay. um, about 20 of it, I had already come in the condom and was like, no, I haven't come yet. And clearly I had <laughs> kept, tried to keep going. Um, and then uh, years later, I found out my friend, one of my friends from that group who I was still friends with, like, oh, yeah, we paid a uh, uh, hooker to, like, take your virginity. You but it fucked me up for the rest of high school because I was like. Oh, that was high school? I, yeah. Dude, I was like 22 when I lost my friend. Well, it fucked me Get up because the rest of, of high school, I was just like, I guess that's how it happens. Girls just come uh, up to you and say, I think you're cute and no, take you to a hotel. Happen. You think you're a stud? I'm a stud. You ever have yeah. a girl just walk up to you and yeah. say, I'm going to take your virginity? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then the rest and of high school. And how do you school, masturbate with that broken arm? Is it possible? You just uh, like, Lefty's been doing a good job. Yeah. Yeah. You just don't dry. I would just dry hump pillows. Yeah. <laughs> You're the Jim Abbott of jerking off. Yeah. yeah there you go. You just put it. You, yeah. put, yeah. the, you just yeah. put the tissue under your stump. Yeah. <laughs> you just put the tissue under your Yeah. 
All right, plug your guys' stuff. We'll get out of here. Matt, where can people find you, buddy? Uh, at Real Matt Marin on Twitter and Instagram, at Comedy Fight NYC, YouTube.com slash Comedy Fight Club for all the roast battle shows every week. Um, and you can get the updates for the live shows. We're at Bowery Electric this Sunday. And then January 1st, we're doing a show at The Stand, 9 o'clock. And Locker Room Talk is the podcast. Me, Joe Gorman, and Bobby Sheehan. Just some Locker Room Talk on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Nice. Yeah. What, what do you got there, Bobby? Uh, check out the Davy Mac Sports Program over on Eastside Dave's YouTube channel. I'm a producer and part of that. Uh, check out the POS show. I do it with Pat Oates. It's a lot of fun. Use promo code POS if you're buying Silk City Hot Sauce. And uh, check out Bobby's World over on Compound Media. It's a sketch show we do. Lots of fun there. Nice, man. So, yeah. like, re- let's recap. We all lost our virginity. All terrifying stories. We have had sex before. Yeah. We swear. That was really my whole point of being yeah. honest to make sure everybody knew I've had sex. All you, all of us would have sex with Casey Anthony. I, uh, me uh, and Bobby would. Yeah, you said you weren't. Know. Yeah, you I undecided. You were Kaylee Anthony. Uh, You're all about Kaylee. No, I don't know if I would. I'd make an honest woman out of her. Teachers should not be held accountable for tweets that they said when they were. 13 years old. I'm upset the tweets weren't worse. Rap lyrics no. doesn't do it for me anymore. Yeah. If you're going to say the N-word in a tweet, I want some real venom. Yeah. <laughs> I like to think it was like a mortal technique. Yeah. Like uh, his anti-conspiracy thing. Yeah. Like Bush didn't blow up the towers. Yeah. <laughs> and unless you're a World Cup soccer player, I don't want to hear yeah. about you getting yes. the death penalty. We yeah. know for you, your hierarchy is lying yes. about being on the World Cup team, yeah, crimes either. against humanity. Well, you know what? He's not, like, they're, it's eight dudes are getting executed. Eight dudes if are you getting, want, if and you the want, only one they brought yeah. up is a guy that plays division yeah. D level soccer. Yeah, if you want to take guy. a stand and be a martyr, you better be. Where's the other eight guys? Be, Put the seven gotta, other guys. I want to know about their soccer. Gotta be experience. a better They also athlete. didn't play. Yeah, they also didn't play World Cup soccer. You gotta be so a high, high, not featured? high level athlete in order to uh, make a stand and be a martyr. Who, who's a professional? Aaron Hernandez. I want Aaron Hernandez. Yeah. If Aaron Sorry. Hernandez came out and made a statement, I'd believe whatever it was yes. at this yeah. point. Yeah, if you yeah. won a Super Bowl, then you get front page news. This dude didn't even play in the World Cup. Yeah. Why is that front yeah, page? I don't think that's what Hernandez is known for, right? He could have been a gay hero. Yeah, he, I been. think he's a gay hero. <laughs> it's like, ever since this kid showed me an Undertaker yeah. documentary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, on that note, we're out. Peace, Thank everybody. You. All right, thanks, fellas. Thanks. Yeah.